one thing to note also on this thing is it shoots just about any type of ammo you can shoot through it. Uh, it's just like any other 22 out there. It's a little picky with ammo in some places, depending on how you break your firearm in. But uh, overall length, I would probably say this handles the most rounds the best uh, without having too many ammo problems. You're going to have a few, few here and there. But uh, overall, I'd probably say it's one of the better out there. Uh, easy to customize. This is the biggest thing about this firearm that I love. And I think most people will agree with me on this subject. This is the biggest one because your your Ruger 1022. There's so much stuff out there, so much available aftermarket parts, barrel stocks, whatever that you can customize this thing to yourself. And what I love about this, you get this when you're younger, nice young kid. You know, go out and get yourself first 22, shoot it, shoot stock, get good at it. Then you start to evolve as a shooter. What do you do? You don't want your stock firearm anymore, right? You want to adjust it to yourself. And the Ruger 1022 will allow you to do this very easily and very cheap. You really can't do that with too many other firearms. Uh, you can do it, but it tends to be pricey and it tends to be complicated to do. This one is not. Say you turn more of a tactical type shooter, you can turn it into a tactical rifle like I did. Like more of a target shooter, more accuracy involved. You turn it into a nice tag driver. Uh, it's very easy to do. It's very cheap to do. So one of the best things about these things, you can evolve these to yourself and as you evolve as a shooter and you can take it with you forever. It's a 40 year old rifle right here by the way. Alright, some cons about this rifle. Uh, there's not too many, but there's some I want to cover. Now, first and foremost, trigger. Trigger's not horrible, but it's by no means a match trigger. Uh, if I had to guess, I'm not exactly sure of the trigger weight itself, but if I had to guess, I would guess it's around 7, maybe 8 pounds. Uh, this is an old rifle, so it might be a little more on this, and it might be a little better on the newer ones. But uh, overall, the trigger is not the greatest. That's good, but it's not the greatest. You can get mad triggers for these very cheap and they're easy to install, but the stock trigger on these, it's by no means a target trigger. Uh, you can be get good at it and it'll keep you good trigger control, but it's not a mad trigger. Alright, another comment about this. I don't have a last round lockout. What do you mean by that? Uh, in modern, most modern firearms, you shoot them, the magazine's empty, uh, the, the slide or bolt or whatever locks back. This don't do that. Not bad, but some people get used to it. I myself get used to it. You know, you'll be shooting, boom, 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 and all of a sudden, you'll get the dreaded click. It means your magazine's empty or you got some kind of feed jam problem. Uh, but, you know, it's not bad. Just don't have a last round lockout. Uh, one other thing I want to mention about this is finishes. I've heard a few complaints about the new modern finishes on these, some of the newer ones. Uh, not necessarily the black, but the, the so-called painted stainless or whatever. I heard some people having chipping problems. Uh, not so much on the outside, but along the mouth of the receiver through your bolt here. They've been having some chipping problems, uh, some people. So just, I ain't saying don't buy the, the, the stainless ones, because I hear some people have, just love them and they work great. But just, uh, just pay attention that when you buying one. Look at your finish first. Pay attention. See if it's going to chip easily. I'm not sure if they solved the problem yet. I heard they were working on it. Something about the paint. They paint on the aluminum alloy. Uh, they don't stick on that good. But just look into that before you do this. Okay, last kind about this. Magazine release. Now I've heard and I've also seen a lot of newer ones are installing the extended mag release on these things. Because I think they kind of get the word out that magazine release on these things are not the greatest. And basically what that means is you have to stick your finger inside a little bit, relieve the pressure off this little plunger here that holds in your magazine, and then you got to kind of wiggle it and drop your magazine out. It's not the best magazine release out there. Now, a lot of people complain about it. It's not bad, but it can be a pain in the butt sometimes compared to a lot of modern magazine releases. But I've also heard the newer ones have the extended ones too. So you might not have to worry about that kind. Alright, customization, mod you can do this thing. Uh, I'm not going to really get into some of the mods, quite frankly, there's too damn many. What I'm going to do is show you what I did to mine, and also if you want to check out my clip, my Ruger 1022 build clip, I'll show you how I do this particular mod. Alright, installed in this particular version, it's a Christie and Christie, a super stock along with a Christie & Christie uh, auto bolt catch and a extended mag release. I also have a 
Picatinny or Weevil type rail with an optic a red dot. Uh, one thing I want to note is the magazine I changed on this, I went from a hot lips to a steel lips. Uh, use steel lips magazines, they tend to work a lot better. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, I thought I had a little video left over, so my part two, so I thought I'd make a little, like, a little documentary of how I make some of this part. Uh, right now we're on, the, I think it's the seventh day of filming. Uh, I kind of film on and off when I can. So this is some of my glamorous uh, making of the video. First thing we're looking at here is my awesome uh, backdrop here. As you can see, it's a, a bed sheet nailed to the wall. <laughs> uh, right here is my new spinning rig. I'm actually quite proud of this baby. You're probably going to see this puppy in a few more uh, clips coming up. I uh, rigged this baby up about three, four days ago. And it's actually, see that little black piece down there? It's actually an old bed post I cut in half. And I had some leftover plywood and I rigged that shit up. And what I did is take a little some fish line here, I don't know if you all can see that and you tack it to the corner right here and then you simply wrap it and then to get the effect of the spin you simply pull the string real slowly and voila there you go, poor man's, I don't know display rotating thing <laughs> for the video yeah, it's pretty tight though, I'm pretty proud of that myself I may say well, here we got the the glamorous lighting set up here. It's an old busted ladder I had laying around from the painting job. There's some uh, lamps ahead. I believe I got those for Christmas one year. You know, display like one of those giant blow up standards or whatever. Got the lights nailed to the ladder. I got another light down here nailed to an old doctor's chair that I picked up a garbage some time ago. Yeah, that's right. I did some garbage picking. Some good furniture up in there. And there you go. You gotta have good lighting for this shit. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, making of Ruger 1022 clip. Uh, day seven.